All right, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Sotko here. Welcome back to the channel. It's been a long time since I made a video. There's a change of scenery, change of sound, and my precious Audio Technica headphones that I've been wearing for like seven years have finally went kaput. There's another pair in the mail, but until then, we got to use these. So today I wanted to talk about Bitcoin halvings, as there is a Bitcoin halving coming up about April 15th, 2024. That's going to be the fourth halving Bitcoin has ever had. So we've only had three halvings and there's not that much data to go along. People assume, okay, the price increases and they're pretty correct with that because with the halving reward, miners have to sell it for a little bit more due to the electricity cost of using it. So the reward is going to go down from 6.8. 25 Bitcoin to 3.125 Bitcoin. Now that's pretty extreme, but I think the the uh, the, the I think the most historical Bitcoin having I, I believe it occurs 2032 is going to be around then, um, and because at that point Bitcoin becomes under one whole Bitcoin per per reward, and uh, that's going to be pretty extreme. It's going to put a, a definite tension on the market and, and on miners. Because you can imagine even now, if you're mining to a pool with only six Bitcoin or soon to be only 3.1 Bitcoin, uh, there's not much Bitcoin to go around. And if you have a big ASIC farm in a big old warehouse with huge fans using a tremendous amount of electricity, uh, and you're trying to fish for just three Bitcoin at a time while you're spending tens of thousands of dollars at a time on, uh, on electricity costs to do that, it's gonna get pretty extreme pretty fast. Now, I want to provide some contextual basis for some of these halvings in the past. Uh, right now, uh, we have been for the past year, this is the year chart on CoinMarketCap. And for about a year, we've been at 20 some thousand dollars. Uh, we broke 30,000 a little while back, um, you know, maybe a couple times there in the past year. But for the most part, we've been floating around an average of maybe uh, 23,000 or so. Uh, it, it kind of appears to be going up over time and recovering. It's hard to say why we have been at this level for so long. It's probably the economy. Um, you know, during during COVID uh, in 2020, uh, Bitcoin exploded and then exploded the, the year after in 2021 due to the halving. Um, and it was, you know, we were getting... Uh, at least Americans were getting stimulus checks and a lot of people didn't necessarily need the money at the time. And so they just plowed it into Bitcoin or something like that. Also, some people were fearing that the entire economy was going to collapse. So people were buying gold, they were buying Bitcoin, um, all that sort of thing. And it was really rocketing up the price. And that's exactly the point that I'm trying to get at here is that there have been halvings over time. Of course, there's only been three and I've, I've marked them here. Uh, the beginning of the color is the, the first halving here. Uh, and that was in about November uh, of 2012. And so ex uh, almost exactly 12 months later, it reached its high point. So it took 12 months. So really nothing happened. Uh, during the halving, and then the months following that, it went to th it, it went uh, in, in twelve months. It went to uh, just over a thousand dollars, like twelve hundred, and then promptly crashed thereafter. Now, there's some reasons for this too. One is that is that uh, Coinbase came out in 2012, and it didn't get popular for a good couple months. But then once it did, it really exploded. Coinbase was one of the first to really offer a bunch of referral rewards. Uh, it was very easy for people to sign up. I think more people knew about Coinbase uh, and were moving over to Coinbase from other exchanges uh, that were sort of no-name exchanges. And of course, we had the great crashing of 2014 with the Mount, the Mount Gox incident and stuff like that. So uh, that was a problem. So was it the halving that rose this uh, or was it Coinbase coming out and being extremely popular? and sort of starting the uh, one of the biggest exchange trends uh, we have ever seen. Now, I argue, uh, of course, that Coinbase isn't the largest exchange in the world, but I, I'd, I'd argue it's probably the safest. Uh, I don't believe that Coinbase has ever been hacked. Now, they've done some shady things. There were some shady things in the news, but I still argue that Coinbase is probably your safest bet if you want to keep 
cryptocurrency on an exchange. Uh, Binance has been hacked, I think, uh, on several occasions, and they've always replaced the money. So they do good at that, but just the fact that they actually have been hacked kind of, kind of leads to a bit of a problem that um, something is different between Coinbase and, and Binance. And at least Coinbase is, especially if you're a US citizen, um, insured, and they're not in Malta. So if something ever happened to your Coinbase on Binance or your cryptocurrency on, on Binance in Malta, um, that's gonna be a problem because how are you going to get it from Malta where there's basically no rules? They basically went there because there's no rules. So there's that. So that took 12 months. Uh, the next halving was in 2016. And 17 months later, uh, we hit our all time high um, for the for the time being of that approximately $20,000 that we all know and love today. So again, it takes quite a while for it to reach a peak. And once it reaches that peak, it goes down from there and it go, and it kind of goes down very hard and very quickly about a year later it's going to reach the bottom uh the top of here was november 13th and the very bottom in this case was in 2015 so a couple years later whereas after the 2017 fiasco extravaganza we um we sort of reached bottom in 2019 it was about december of 2019 for so so a year later so you're talking about a year or two later you're going to be at the bottom so if you're sort of scouting this out this trend and i'm going to give a very contextual warning again about trends um it would seem like you should be buying in about now and then selling about 17 or 18 months later by this chart however the problem with that <clears throat> is that trends are bustable. Trends are, are, are not very good when it comes to financial, um, financial possibilities. So, uh, you know, if, if everybody knows that the price of something is going to rise on Saturday, it's not going to now. Uh, it's either gonna rise on Sunday or on Friday or on a totally different day because now sellers are prepared to sell at a different time and buyers are prepared to buy at a different time. If everybody knows what the price is going to be, there is no market. That's the whole idea, is that a whole bunch of people are willing to buy and sell at this price, et cetera, et cetera. And everybody's sort of thinking the same thing. I can't wait to sell and make some profit. I can't wait to buy and then sell and make some profit. So everybody's doing this cyclical thing. Everybody's looking at this same chart and they're like, oh yeah, 18 months from now, uh, it's going to be at its high and that's what I'm going to sell. So it's, it sort of changes the dynamic. It's like the butterfly effect. It's like knowing the future. And if you do, like you affect everything else by your decisions, kind of like going into the past and affecting things and it like ripples. It's just not going to work after a while. Like if you know the trend, if like every single week, Bitcoin rose on a Friday and it did that four weeks in a row. The fifth week, you're like, I'm prepared. I'm going. I'm, I'm going to sell on Friday. That's when I'm prepared to sell because I I know that every Friday, uh, Bitcoin goes up in price. And when you go to do that on the fifth week, you find out that uh, Bitcoin kept rising in price and you sold too early because the trend got busted. Everybody figured it out. There's, it's not just you looking at these trends um, on exchanges and 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 through technical analysis and things like that. So there's that. Um, now, going back to the 2016 having again, was it the having? See, this is the problem with these the, the having is, is, is it really affecting the price of Bitcoin? And I would say yes, objectively, it, it sort of has to, because if you're mining uh, for, for such a tremendous amount of electricity, you have to raise your selling point a little bit. Okay, but does it affect it this greatly? That's hard to calculate. That's hard to actually say, yes, because of the halving, it went from $1,000 in July of 2016 to $20,000. That's what did it. Really, is that what did it? We don't know. Because obviously the price is going to have to go up. You might argue um, and say, well, ASIC miners are getting more and more efficient. 
The problem is, is if you take a look at these ASIC miners, um, if you take a look at the, the most recent ASIC miners on any website, um, they all use 2,000, 2,500, 3,000 watts plus. Um, and that's been like that since 2016, 2017, uh, and before. The, I mean, the old S5, S8 miners uh, used 2,000, 2,500, 3,000 watts. Uh, and they only mined, you know, 5, 10, 15 terahash type deal. And now we have like these 100 plus terahash miners, but they're still using the same amount of electricity. So yes, they are more efficient by using 2000 or 2500 or 3000 watts of electricity to mine faster, but you're still using that same amount of electricity. So your bill isn't changing. You're getting more Bitcoin for your bill, uh, but your but your bill isn't changing. And with more people mining, you're not really getting more Bitcoin because if everybody has 100 terahash miners, you have a hundred terahash miner. You're just competitive at this point. You're just not falling behind. You're not above the game just because you bought the 100 terahash miner doesn't mean you're making more money. Now you're just competitive. You're on the same level. So it's interesting. So in in 2016, uh, just at the beginning of 2017, uh, came the uh, that's the year of referrals in my opinion. This was the referral YouTuber explosion because we had things like um, BitConnect and we had third-party mining programs that would be mining Bitcoin for you. You'd put $1,000 and they would say, oh yeah, we'll have a contract and we'll mine for you forever and ever. Um, and if you just invite some friends, we'll give you a better, a better hash rate. And that really, really disproportionately affected uh, YouTubers in particular, uh, because if you start a YouTube channel and you go to uh, one of those old third party mining websites uh, when they first began and you put a hundred dollars in and you're getting a dollar of Bitcoin every day and, you know, in 101 days, you'll have broke profit. Great. Cool. And that's not much. But you make a tutorial and you just show everybody and people are curious and they're like, well, what happens when I put money into this? Let me just go on YouTube and find out. And so they find out and then they use your referral link because they get 3% off, a whole hot 3% off, but the YouTuber gets extra hash rate. So now the next video that that person makes, uh, they're making a lot more, more, more money per day and more money per day. And then with all of the revenue that they're getting, they're pouring more money into these contracts, et cetera, including BitConnect. Uh, because you would get more and more money and it looks like these people are just making tremendous amounts of money so everybody's just pouring their money into it um and uh, people during this year people were mortgaging their they were taking on a second mortgage on their house they were putting a second mortgage on their grandmother's house because they were so sure be with the rise of bitcoin with this tremendous rise i mean you can see this tremendous rise almost compared to anything else uh, from one thousand to two thousand, twenty thousand dollars was a twenty x increase. This is one of the biggest, most explosive periods in cryptocurrency we've ever seen. Sure, Bitcoin got to sixty thousand dollars, but compared to twenty thousand, that's only three times. This was one thousand dollars to twenty thousand. So you might be able to find a similar time in cryptocurrency or a different cryptocurrency that was more explosive like xrp or something like that but like just looking at the king of crypto here bitcoin this was the most explosive period if you weren't a part of this period in cryptocurrency i really feel bad for you you missed out this was this was incredible uh there was a new coin to mine virtually every day um you'd be like, oh what is this new coin vertcoin somebody would tell you about it vertcoin you're like okay i'll go mine it and um it, it, and it was three dollars a coin and it exploded to ten dollars a coin if you just kept all the coins and then at the end of the year blasted and sold them uh huge profit everywhere everywhere you looked, there was just profit a uh, new coin come out just just start mining it just start mining it and selling it um day trading was incredibly easy day trading is incredibly easy when the price of bitcoin is just going up because then all you have to do is just wait for a small dip buy in and wait for it to just go up and up and up and up and up and and then sell it was it was it was very super easy it was a great time um so was it you know the having uh, that did this 1000 to 20000 or was it all of that youtuber hype all of that referral hype all of that third party mining hype all of that bitconnect hype 
all of that XRP explosion hype, all of those new new coins coming out at that time. Uh, so 17 months. Um, and moving on to the 2020 uh, halving, it was in May of 2020. Now, the economy was sort of shut down in uh, at, the, at the very beginning of the year in 2020 due to the whole COVID-19 uh, fiasco. And we've seen, a, you know, a major dump in the price of Bitcoin. I mean, you can see $9,000 here to like 3,800. There was this huge slump. And then everybody started receiving, or at least Americans, and I think even a lot of countries across the world were paying extra for people to stay home, yada, yada. And there was this idea that, uh, you know, maybe, um, maybe uh, you know, the economy is going to crash and we should be buying gold and cryptocurrency and things like that. So there was this major a hype all in its own, a totally different hype. I mean, this started in 2009, Bitcoin, and this was Bitcoin was sort of made from the 2008 crisis. It was because of that, that somebody really put Bitcoin out there. I'm sure Bitcoin was being made a little bit before that, but um, you know, so Bitcoin had never seen an economic crisis. This whole time, the economy was just increasing. Um, you know, and not just cryptocurrency, but just like the, the economy in general, because we were recovering from one of the worst crashes of all time. So really there was no place to go but up. So the economy was just increasing, increasing, increasing. And we get to 2020 when things start to go haywire. We've never seen this sort of thing. Governments entirely shutting down over, over you know, uh, over a disease. And if you want to talk about the disease, you want to talk about the whole shutdown thing, that's a completely different video, a completely different topic in itself. But there was some fear out there. Maybe the economy is going to crash. Maybe we should buy gold and stuff. There was also at some point in here, I'm not sure exactly when that occurred. I think it was about around here um, <clears throat> that Tesla started accepting Bitcoin for, for, for Teslas, for the cars. And that just created this ex ex an unbelievable explosion. The price went up so fast, it was unbelievable. And then they stopped accepting it. And I'm not sure if that was around here or after, uh, but then we seen that the highest period was about 18 months later. This one's a little subjective though, because you, you might be able to argue this was the highest period. No, 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 no. This was the highest period at 64,000. So they were just about the same at the same periods. Um, and so this is this is one of the most interesting periods because it's the hardest period to describe really like was it because of was it because of covid or was it because of strictly the having or was it because tesla started accepting bitcoin and then everybody thinks that everybody's going to start accepting bitcoin after that if elon musk does it plus elon musk was you know uh tweeting elon musk started tweeting about crypto around this period uh, dogecoin etc 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 so what is my theory here for the next halving? If you want to go on this chart, then we're going to have a halving on April 15th, 2024. Uh, not much is going to happen. As you can see, not much really happens directly after the halving. You can kind of see yeah, it starts to increase a little bit. Started to took a little while here, but started to increase a little bit. Took about, uh, what, three, four months there. Started to increase about immediately with... Um, the very first having, but I would argue that's about when Coinbase came out. So everybody was buying, buying, buying on the easy to use Coinbase that was American too. So it really got Americans into it. Um, and they were they were before that as well, but uh, a lot of the exchanges were, were just um, in a completely different country. I think Coinbase was was definitely one of the, one of the first major explosive exchanges uh, for, for Americans. And, um, you know, kind of kind of went up uh, quickly after the third having too. So you can kind of expect maybe a, a period of a, of a couple months, it seems like, um, before Bitcoin will start slowly going up. And if you want to go off this chart here, I think this one is the anomaly, the 12 months. Um, I think that was the anomaly of Bitcoin um, 
just because this is such an early period that not there weren't actually really that many investors. I mean, this explosive rise in price here from virtually zero to, um, you know, eighteen, twenty dollars, twelve dollars, etc. Uh, Coinbase came out when uh, Bitcoin was about six dollars. So somewhere around here. Um, there just wasn't an, many investors. So like the volume was so low that if you bought a few thousand dollars in Bitcoin, you're probably going to raise the price a couple bucks, um, you know, until as you get further down, then you're getting more and more volume. So this is a totally different experience. I think this very first one here. But if Bitcoin is going to have in April, which is, um, you know, obviously not for several months still, uh, I think if you look at about 17 or 18 months later, that's going to put us about November of 2025 is going to be um, our highest period of Bitcoin for that for that time. So if you want to try and uh, go with the trend uh, of what has occurred in the past. And again, we only have three. We just have three. And that's just not a lot of data to go on. No one no one in their right mind, no scientist, no economist, no, nobody in their right mind would go off of only three instances and um, exclusively go for that. See, we just have three halvings. So again, I would say 18 months after April is going to be the highest point of, um, of Bitcoin. So about November of 2025. So if that's something you want to put in your little in your little memos, sell Bitcoin, you know, pay attention to Bitcoin November 2025. That's probably your best bet within a few reasonable months or so. Um, but you can see here that the price changes less over time. See, we went from like ten dollars here to a to twelve hundred. That's tremendous. We went from a thousand here. Actually, it was uh, six hundred, but at the beginning of twenty seventeen, I believe it was a thousand. So if you want to go for by year by year, but we went from like six seven hundred dollars here to the high point of like nineteen twenty thousand dollars, nearly twenty thousand dollars. We went from a period here of like nine thousand, you could call that ten thousand maybe, to sixty thousand dollars. So you can see that it's actually starting to trend smaller. It takes more. It takes a tremendous amount of money to continue raising it even further. So if we're at something like twenty or thirty thousand dollars in April of twenty twenty four, you know maybe because it's only it's only going up a few times at this point, like like six times. It was like twenty times. This is way more than twenty times, and then twenty times, and then uh, what like six x kind of deal, maybe seven. So we could think maybe 5X, so $100,000, maybe it would break a little bit more. I think the problem with $100,000 Bitcoin is that uh, it's a psychological barrier. Every every $10,000 is a psychological barrier. Oh, we're almost at 60,000, we're almost at 60,000, right? We're almost at 70,000. And there's gonna be people stacking orders at 70,000. They think that's gonna be the top. Uh, people, people don't stack orders at, very odd values. It's a psychological thing in, in markets. Like people don't stack orders that you can see the price here um, on the right side of the screen, $26,000, 788. That's it. Like just everyone's just plowing orders on there. Um, there are standing orders at that value, I'm sure. Um, and there are standing orders at lower than that. But like the, if you, if you take a look at any exchange, just go on an exchange right now and just, you know, if you're trading and take a look at the, um, Take a look at the even psychological barriers, 5,000, 10,000, 15,000, 20,000. So we're at um, um, 26,786 dollars approximately right now across the exchanges average. Take a look at 27,000. There's gonna be way more orders than there are like $10 above where we're at now. It's just, it's just the way it goes. So again, it's gonna be like 60, 70, 80, 90, and we're gonna have to crush through it. Um, and it, what usually happens is you kind of crush through it, but there's so many sellers that now the, the, the buying orders, like the, uh, the momentum of the buyers has slowed down and sometimes it dips down to like 88,000 and then it's going to, then it's going to be able to break through once people believe in it, once the believers come in, you know, and they start, they start putting more in. So I think hundred thousand is going to be a huge, huge, significant, um, psychological barrier and there's just going to be an unbelievable amount of orders at a hundred thousand dollars so 
that I don't see it really getting much higher than that. I would that's that's one of the kind of things that I'd love to be wrong about. Like when it's like, oh, Mr. Sacco, you said it would only reach $100,000, but we're at $168,000. And I'm like, man, that's something I love to be wrong about. Oh, no, I was wrong, right? Like as I'm counting my money. Um, but uh, I, I, but you can see that it, it's just not getting much higher and higher and higher. But that's all I have for you guys. I think this turned out to be a longer video than I thought. Yeah, we're at like 25 minutes. But uh, I hope that kind of put some context into the Bitcoin halvings. Like if you guys have any... Uh, comments or opinions about that, put it in the comments below. Um, maybe we'll have a debate. Uh, I do plan on going live at some point here soon, and um, we'll have a we'll have a bigger discussion. And I'll catch up on the news and new coins that anybody wants to point out to me, all that sort of thing. But until then, as usual, I'll see you guys next time.